What is going on? My name is Taylor, and this podcast is called Who Knows? A podcast that works to answer the simply complicated questions of life and promote a life of self-love, mental health, and creating your own normal. Don't worry, we are just as lost as you are. Hey everyone, I hope that everyone is doing as well as they can be right now. And I say that because as I speak, we are in the midst of a time in our lives that we are seriously never going to forget. I'm currently on day 16 of working at home and day one of a shelter-in-place order due to coronavirus. This is probably one of the scariest times in many of our lives, and I know that when I first heard about the virus, I spent hours and hours and hours looking things up, constantly checking my phone for the latest news, and thinking about very little else aside from what the hell is going on right now. Almost everyone I know is working from home or out of work completely, posting about their quarantine activities, talking about the virus, and expressing many feelings of confusion, fear, and uncertainty. This podcast is about life and mental health, and life as we know it is not as we know it in so many ways. I know my anxiety has been through the roof. My OCD is making me perform rituals that I haven't ever felt the need to do before. I'm scared of things that I wasn't scared of before. And every single day I go through periods of feeling okay, and that quickly shifts into being terrified for my life. And I know I am not alone. With this podcast, we work to remind everyone that you are not alone in life. So many of us may physically be alone right now or feel as though we are isolated from the world against our will. And when I start to feel hopeless or scared or alone during this time, I remind myself of a few things. You are doing what you can. Stay home. Stay home. Minimize contact with others. That is the bare minimum that we are being asked to do right now. Yes, we have no idea how long it's going to be for, and it feels really, really confusing and long and scary for however long it is. It is for the best. So many people who work in the medical field right now are going through something that we are only seeing a fraction of from the news and online. We have to do what we can to support them. Seriously, we have to do that. You are not alone. We are all in this right now, and we are all scared and all confused. Your feelings are real and valid, and it is so okay to feel whatever you are feeling right now. You are enough. All that you're being asked to do right now is take care of yourself and the ones that you love. That might mean staying away from the ones that you love for a little bit, or just making sure that your kids are eating and feeling loved. And it is 1000% doing what makes you feel emotionally and mentally healthy. Eat those chips. Watch that movie. Watch that movie again and again. That's what I've been doing. Sleep on the couch, wear your favorite t-shirt, whatever it is, as long as you aren't hurting yourself or anyone else. And as long as you are staying home as much as you can, it is okay to do what makes you feel good. It doesn't feel like it right now. We don't have a ton of answers, but it is going to be okay somehow. And I truly believe that. I have to believe that or else I'd be hopeless. So let's keep believing that somehow if we do what we can, it's going to be okay. Even though it feels a little bit like the world has stopped turning, before all this happened, we were getting ready to finish off season three. So we're here to do that. And I really hope that this episode, this finale episode, gives you a little joy in a time when we all really need it most. Nose fam. Here we are. We are at the end of season three, the finale. I'm going to cry. This is hands down my favorite episode of the entire season. The concept is something that I came up with the last season and intend to do for every season as long as we are producing, which hopefully is for a really long time. At the end of each interview we did this season, I asked our guests a bonus question, a question that I feel sort of sums up the emotion of the whole season. This season, I asked our guests, what inspires you? We heard from so many amazing people this season who seriously inspired the heck out of me in so many ways with all the cool stuff that they're doing. And I wanted to know what it is that inspires them while they're doing what they do or just in general, you know? 
I also want to quickly shout out Lynn, who completely conceptualized this episode and who is seriously one of the biggest inspirations that I have. I'm so, 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 so thankful to have her on the team and as part of the family and as a friend. She is the coolest, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear what she created. I love you, Lynn. You're the best. So let's get into it. The finale of season three, where we ask the question, what inspires you? What inspires me? Oh, man. Okay. Let me think about this one. Oof. What inspires me? What inspires me? Oh, my gosh. Let me think for a second. What inspires me? I have a very long list. (laughs) I would like to say something. Hold on. Let me think. This sounds cheesy. The question is, what inspires you? I'm inspired by um, a lot of things. This is Casey from episode six, Buttons, Business, and Disney Life. I love pop culture. I am a huge, like, trash TV fan. I love it all. So, like, I feed off of it. You know, just, like, it just makes me happy and it, like, kind of, like, recharges me and, like, fuels me. And, like, I use it a lot for Buttons, um, just pop culture. But then also, like, I really like... Just kind of like right now, my whole like aesthetic is like this like 90s, like goosebumps, like Nickelodeon, like create, you know, just like my child, like things from my childhood. Um, just like that nostalgia, like really inspires me. Like, just like the, you know, the art from the 80s and 90s is just like so good, you know? Um, so that inspires me. So there's a, like, there's ways that I can answer this. This is RJ Silva from episode seven, Creating Theater. I think there's a bad way to answer this where it's like you use envy as a way to inspire yourself. You see people that are doing great things and you're like, why can't I do that? I should be able to do that. I'm going to do it. And it feels spiteful. Like it feels like I want to show this person that I too can have this many followers on Instagram or have this, like, you know, be able to do this type of show or, or, or kind of you know have this sort of turnout and um that was my motivation for the longest time and I still have that a little bit like now even at like just like my day-to-day life like just at work I always feel like I have to I inspire myself through like feeling bad for myself um and I think it it's proven to me that I can be inspired, that I can at least put a work ethic, even though like what started it was was bad and, and kind of self-conscious. Um, I think now what inspires me is just like people like thriving, like seeing, like turning it around and not envying people, but now just like celebrating them, enjoying their success, like kind of taking it in as like, look like they they were able to do it too I'm not doing it because I I, it in out of spite but I'm doing it because like I am inspired by it so it's 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 kind of like a yeah like a weird turn to of how negative I used to think about it so like now like like on Twitter you see a lot of like I listen to a lot of like comedy podcasts. So a lot of the people that, you know, started from like podcasts are now getting TV shows and like are on Saturday night live. Like it's amazing. And like kind of proves that like, you know, the hard work pays off and like that if you just keep doing it, like you can do, (laughs) you can do it too. I think what inspires me are just like some of the really close people in my life. This is Tori Silver from episode eight, Making Music. Like my mom and just my family and my partner. And it's just really nice having support from people and supporting them. And just, you know, the people who I'm close with are just the people that, you know, keep me going. So it's just nice having them around. (laughs) 
I would say that uh, myself and others who maybe have mental health uh, issues and stigma that goes around that, those people are inspiring. This is Locked and Loaded from episode one, Roller Derby with the Greensboro Roller Derby. To get up every day, to keep going, to have a team, to love each other, to love everyone, that's inspiring because there isn't as much love as there needs to be. So the mental health stigma is not love and we're all people. That's love, so. I think that I have really grown to think of like the women that surround me and the women that I gravitate towards as really inspirational. This is Lexi Ritter from episode 10, comedy. As far as like, you know, break the glass ceiling, break, break the glass walls, break the glass floor, let everybody up. Like everything in that regard comes, comes from like the women in my life. Um, my mom. This is Sophia Carter Khan from episode four, The World of Podcasting. And my friends and the women in my life who, and non-binary people who are, and queer people who are working hard to live and exist and find joy in the world around us. The people who I see giving of themselves to make this country better, <laughs> make the world a better place. And also like being in, being in nature is inspiring. I live in LA, so it's pretty smoggy here. But anytime I leave LA, I'm like, oh my God, the world is great, actually. <laughs> Clouds, <laughs> uh, sunrise, sunset, breeze, just like nature, just being out there. That inspires me, it keeps me going. This is Marissa Blossom from episode five, Creativity in Clouds. <laughs> the fact that there are colors, colors, like just colors inspire me. Music inspires me. Artists, musicians, Oprah. <laughs> uh, and Oprah and India Ari have had a huge impact on me, like healing and continuing to heal. So that would say those two people. Friendship inspires me. Spiritual ideas and conversations inspire me. And people who are working to make a difference in the world and make change. Yeah, and just people who are following and doing what they love. I just, I'm inspired by so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming down. Here we go. Other people inspire me. This is Nicole Zalmaker from episode nine, writing and authorship. You know, when I started writing about my own mental health and physical health, it, it was really seeing other people doing the same thing that pushed me to, to see that I could do that, that I wouldn't be alone in doing it. The, the people around me, um, I, I tend to surround myself with strong women and, you know, people doing cool things. And I don't know, I, I come from a family of strong women. It's me and my mom and my sister, and they're, they're kind of badass. and. Uh, my sister's currently applying to grad schools and she got all A's this semester. We're very proud of her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, have just really awesome body positive feminist badass friends. And um, I think they're they're really, I've, I've been really lucky with just the people I've been able to to access and surround myself with. And I think those those are the biggest, um, the, the biggest things to inspire me are just the, the people that I've surrounded myself with. It's hard not to be inspired by the people around you. This is the magical Miranda from episode 11, Instagram and YouTube. It's funny because it's like, yes, they influence. They are all doing their jobs, but I am constantly inspired by my friends who also own small businesses, like the OGs, like Casey or my friend Lindsay from Pretty Little Monograms, Brooke, who's now BB Brooke. Like they have all built up from the bottom and like have grown 
not only their businesses, but also their social media over these past couple of years. And it's just super inspiring because not only, yes, they're small businesses, but their following loves them and loves following them. And I think that balance is so cool. And I just am always constantly inspired by what my friends are saying, what they're doing, um, initiatives they're taking, new partnerships that they're getting. It's just, it's just so cool to see. And you know that if you work hard, you can also do it. So, and that's the whole thing about being inspired by somebody is because you see part of yourself in them and that gives just you the motivation to do it more. The way I'll phrase it is awareness and resonance. This is Josh Witten from episode three, Entrepreneurship and Saving the Planet. When I become aware of things going on in the world that are difficult or need solving, or when I see an opportunity for creativity or beauty, I become aware that that opportunity exists. And then there's resonance. I can't respond to every single problem in the world, and I can't take every creative opportunity that I can imagine, but some of them really resonate. And it's almost like I can't resist. And I must, must do. There is no try at that point when both the awareness and the resonance are there. It's hard to say what inspires me. This is Lauren Paris from episode two, Cats on Instagram. It sounds cliche, <laughs> but as an artist, I, I tend to be inspired when I least expect it. If I am seeking inspiration to create something, it doesn't come. <laughs> I could sit there for hours with nothing. Um, I tend to just be inspired by a spark of whatever it may be. I tend to be inspired as a human by seeing other people's passion uh, in whatever form that may take, whether that's going to be a fellow artist or someone who is very passionate about rescuing animals or whatever their work or hobbies may be. I'm seeing someone put so much of themselves into something in a really genuine fashion always tends to inspire me as well out and about in the world. I would be remiss to say that like my dad didn't also inspire that in me and, and he used to say every morning he would like when he would drop me off at elementary school he would say like use your powers for good not evil and I always found inspiration in that little mantra um, because he like in saying that fully instilled in me like that I had powers and that that was something that like any buddy could have and that I was born with and I think that's like really really highly important um, to to who I am and where I've gotten to be. And this is kind of all tea, all shade on Greensboro right now. There's a lot of petty people out here. There's a lot of people fighting within their own communities and not looking out for their best interests. So what's, in, what's inspiring to me is that Greensboro Roller Derby, we are the exact opposite of that. This is the Grimberlin Reaper from episode one, Roller Derby with the Greensboro Roller Derby. We are totally all teamwork. We are super DIY. And we're just really, like, we are a great team. I believe that, like, you know, getting out into the public, we need to get out and show that, you know, you can make the dream work with teamwork. Like, you can, you know, you don't have to be petty. You don't have to be fighting with each other. Just get along, just like we do. And it, the world will be a better place. So that's inspiring to me. Let's go. 23. Looks like you've got some competition. Uh, 
obviously Disney really inspires me um, because it's just like this. They have a way of like telling stories that is incredible and it just like, you know, can make you laugh, it makes you cry. Um, it, it can bring, it just brings things, you know, to your emotions that you're like, why, why is this bow bun making me cry? <laughs> Ariel? Eric! You, you can talk. So I'm really inspired by the work that like, you know, Disney does, like the storytelling they do. Stories, people's stories inspire me so much. Just like hearing what people go through and how they think through things. Anybody who's doing their thing, whatever you're doing, anybody who's really digging in to what they're doing and how, like, doing what they want to do. Am I alone? No, I don't think so. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode and every episode that you've listened to. You might know this, you might not, but you listening to the show is what makes it what it is. We do the show for all of us out there who are searching for a community and who want to talk about all the things all the time. I want to give a huge thank you to every single one of our guests this season who came on the show and opened up about who they are and what they do. I wouldn't have a show without you guys either, and you're all amazing, and I'm so honored to have had the chance to talk to each and every one of you, and I'm so happy to have you all in the Who Knows fam. You know, if you come on the show, you're part of the Who Knows fam, and if you listen to the show, you're part of the Who Knows fam. The Who Knows fam is enormous, and I love every single one of them. I say at the end of every episode that we encourage you to have conversations like these with people in your life. The more conversations like these we have, the less we feel so alone trying to figure out life and the closer we feel to those that we love. And I truly believe that. Talk to people, get to know one another, learn about who people are and learn about their emotions. It will help you learn more about yourself. I really believe that. I feel like that's what I've done. I also always say, learn about new things. Ask people about who they are and what they do. You may learn something new or get excited about something in a way you never thought possible. I seriously believe this as well. At the end of every single interview I did and every single time I listened back to these episodes, I found myself reinvigorated, filled with new ideas and ready to take on life. And I hope that that happened for you in some of these episodes or in all of them. And again, and always, thank you all so much for listening to the show. And we cannot wait to be back for season four. We're not exactly sure when that is yet, but follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for all the updates and some content that we'll be creating on those platforms while we're away. Maybe I might have a few ideas for some fun mini episodes while we're away. We'll find out. Lynn and I have been talking, been talking to some people. We'll see how it goes. And if you want even more, you can join our Patreon for as low as $1. Even after the season is over, we'll be doing stuff over there and it's super silly and super fun and we hope to see you over there too and like i always say if you want to stay up to date with episode releases or see cute pictures of cats you can follow us on instagram and twitter at who knows pod we're also on facebook at who knows we feature pets on our instagram story every day we release a new episode so if you want to send us a picture of your cat or dog or any animal we will post them on the days we release new episodes and i'd love to have a stockpile so keep on sending them you can also visit our website at Who Knows Pod, and if you want to send us any questions we can answer on the show, you can email us at taylor at whoknowspod.com. The best way to support us is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell your friends, tell everyone about the show. We want to grow this community, and we need your help to do that. To support us even further, become a patron for as low as $1 a month for access to exclusive content and to help the show get better and better for all of you. This episode was hosted by me, Taylor Dankovich. Edited and produced by Lynn Barbera. Our intro music is by Chris Williams. And our outro and transition music is by Tori Silver. And there was a lot of other music in this show that we loved and we thank you for. Who knows who's out there? But I love you. And thanks for listening to season three. We cannot wait to come back for season four. See you later. Cause all I ever needed was to hold on 
to something real. I'm going to get you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a way to open this here window. I'm going to chomp on that fur little tail of yours and bite off those little ears. Because I'm a killer. I'm Killer Cloud. I will get you in the night. I will avenge all the kitties out there that ever wanted to beat up a squirrel. I should probably actually finish the episode, right? <laughs>